Okay, this is page eight in the packet, and there's just a few vocabulary terms that we're gonna go over. Um, an aqueous solution, um, when you look at that, <clears throat> aqueous is going to mean that it's water that contains dissolved substances. Okay, so that's going to be an aqueous solution. And I'm going to list all these and then I'll explain them to you. Um, when we look at a solute, sorry, my writing's big, um, that is the substance being dissolved. The solvent is going to be the dissolving, can you guys hear the bulldog snoring in the background? The dissolving agent. So usually it's in a larger amount as well. Okay, and so we put the solute into the solvent and out of that, we are going to get the solution. Oops, why did I do that? What a solution is though, is a homogeneous mixture. And what that is saying is that it is the same throughout. So let's put this in some really simple details, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's make some Kool-Aid. So I've got a pitcher of water here, okay? It's my Kool-Aid pitcher. This is a really bad drawing. Shh, pour, pour spout. Okay, so water's in there, and I'm going to make some cherry Kool-Aid. So I'm going to get a packet. We're going old school, back to the 80s, guys. A packet of Kool-Aid. There he is, the Kool-Aid man. And this was super sugary, cherry flavored crystals. And so I'm going to pour those crystals into my water. Now this is gonna be an aqueous solution because water is the dissolving agent. So here, the water is my solvent, the Kool-Aid is my solute, and after I add the solute to the solvent, I'm going to have a solution of cherry Kool-Aid. Okay, so my solution is the Kool-Aid that you drink. <clears throat> so Kool-Aid is actually an aqueous solution because you're using water. The solute is the cherry crystals that get put in. The water was the solvent, so the dissolving agent. And what did we create? We created a homogeneous mixture that you can drink. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that everything dissolves or that this packet dissolves Sorry, this packet right here is all going to dissolve is a good thing because you want it to be a homogeneous mixture when you drink it, okay? So that's saying that it's going to be the same throughout. So if I drink this cup of cherry Kool-Aid off the top in, at noon and then at eight o'clock at night, I go back because I'm thirsty again and I'm drinking a cup from the bottom, it should be the same cherry Kool-Aid throughout that entire pitcher, okay? So it's a homogeneous mixture. Now, <clears throat> someone might get really smart and say, oh, I love cherry Kool-Aid, so I'm gonna add eight packets to this gallon of water. Well, it's supposed to be one packet for that gallon. Well, I'm gonna get smart now and add eight. That's not gonna work so well. And so what's gonna end up happening then is there's not enough water or solvent to dissolve all of that Kool-Aid crystal solute. 
And so there's only so much water and what's gonna happen is the rest of it is going to fall to the bottom. And so no matter how long you stir it, you're gonna have seven packets of Kool-Aid built up, crystally lumpy solid on the bottom. And that's what you saw in the pogo activity. Okay, moving on to page nine. Um, <clears throat> what happens is things become saturated. So the solvent is holding the maximum amount of solute. It's in equilibrium. This would be good Kool-Aid, okay? You follow the instructions and the amount of water took the amount of crystals, but it's saturated. It cannot hold anymore. So if I put packets two through eight in there, they're not going to dissolve. When something is saturated, okay, it cannot hold anymore. So I say, you know, it's raining in my backyard and all of a sudden I've got puddles of water everywhere. Why? The ground is saturated. It cannot hold or pass through any more water. I dip a sponge into a bucket of water and I bring it up, that's saturated. So when you think of something being saturated, it's soaked and it cannot hold anymore. If you're unsaturated, it's holding less. If it's super saturated, it has more, more than it should and it's very unstable. And usually the only way that you can get that to happen is by heating it up. So if you increase the temperature, it's gonna allow more to become dissolved but it's a super unstable system. And as you'll see down in the video at the bottom, just one little crystal as it comes down to room temperature can disrupt the whole thing. Um, solubility is the grams of solute per 100 grams. And you're always going to see <clears throat> when we start talking about these solubility curves, that is always your label on your Y axis. So they're gonna tell you the number of grams of the solute, how many grams of Kool-Aid per 100 grams of solvent that will dissolve in there, okay? So it's just the amount per 100 grams of water. So always check that and just make sure that it's always in 100 grams. <clears throat> if you are soluble, that means that you are very easily going to dissolve. If you're insoluble, you're not going to. So something soluble, soluble would be like sugar or salt if I put it in water. Insoluble, drop a rock in there. It's not going to dissolve. These are solubility curves down here. Um, this one is for ionic solids. This one over here is for gases. And if you notice, on this one, we've got temperature down on the bottom <clears throat> on the ionic graph. And as the temperature goes up, more and more of the ionic solid will be able to be dissolved. So down here, you've got sodium chloride going up. In the yellow is sodium nitrate, and that's going up. And then up here, you've got potassium nitrate. And as the temperature goes up this way, okay, we can add more. Remy's snoring really loud um, because my Y scale is going up 50, 100, 150, 200. Gases are inverse. As the temperature goes across, I'm going to be able to dissolve less of a gas. Okay? Um, at this point, you should watch this video down here. Pretty cool. Um, we would have done this demonstration in... <clears throat> In class, had we been in our brick and mortar classroom, sitting in a desk, um, and what we do is we take a test tube, okay, and in that test tube, I would have added sodium thiosulfate, okay, so it would be just be a solid down on the bottom, <clears throat> and I would have put that in some water and then I would have heated it up, okay? So this is sodium thiosulfate, which means really nothing to you. It's just the solid at the bottom. 
And how is the solubility of the sitting solution increased? For number two, we increase the temp. Okay, so I would have taken this test tube full of stuff and I would have put it over a flame. Okay, here's my Bunsen burner. Oh, we like it blue in the middle. Remy, stop snoring. Okay, so what's gonna happen is all of that is going to dissolve. Okay, and so you would just have liquid in there. Number three, what happened when a crystal was added? So after we heat this, we let it cool down and it's stain dissolved. And then all I would do is take one little crystal, just one more of that sodium thiosulfate. And when I would drop it into the top of there, this is basically just a clear liquid. All of a sudden inside of the test tube with that clear liquid, you would see crystals starting to form and they just look like cobwebs going out and they keep going and keep going and keep going. The reason this happened was that I had a super saturated solution in this test tube. Because I heated it, it made it super saturated. Then that super saturated cools down, it still stays still stays dissolved, but the second I drop that crystal in there into that unstable solution, you're going to see a crystal form.